Hello, hello, beautiful people. How's everybody doing today? I hope you guys are doing well. I hope your reviews are doing okay. It's a fairly, fairly nice, beautiful winter this afternoon. Well, it's almost nighttime. And I just want to fairly quickly go over a few cardiac diseases that are um, important that you will most likely encounter in your exam. Now, before I kind of divided and kind of segmented the, the various cardiac diseases uh, more towards, you know, the physiology uh, and the anatomy um, correlating to each disease, and also a few mnemonics, such as what I call the Big Mac, which is basically the big three that you will most likely encounter in your exam, which is the myocardial infarction, your angina, and your CHF. And obviously we have our valvular diseases, right? Our mitral stenosis, our mitral insufficiency, um, uh, or, you know, uh, mitral regurgitation uh, disease, the mitral valve prolapse, aortic stenosis and our aortic insufficiency right of course we have a few ischemic heart disease and then uh, we're gonna go over you know inflammatory and uh, infective um, heart diseases uh, and the big three are what we call the PME which is your pericarditis your myocarditis and endocarditis right um, obviously, inflammatory-wise, we also have our uh, cardiomyopathy, right? Which is farther broken down into your dilated or congestive uh, cardiomyopathy, your restrictive, and your hypo, hyperthrophic uh, cardiomyopathy. Now, I also, and this is from a previous review in which I also went over a few cardiac procedures, uh, mainly you know, um, non-invasive cardiac procedures, both invasive and non-invasive, uh, which include echocardiography, your, uh, your cardiac catheterization. And then we're going to go over uh, PTCA, right? Uh, or coronary uh, artery stent uh, placement and your cabbage, right? Or CABG or coronary artery bypass graft, right? Now, I did... Previously also went over the cardiac medications, right? Which uh, the, the, the most common classification, your diuretics, your calcium channel blockers, your ACE inhibitors or angiotensin converting enzymes, your uh, con, 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 angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, right? And your antihypertensives and also your vasodilators, and your beta adrenergic blockers, right? Um, now, my intent for this review was I was just going to briefly go, go over heart attack or uh, myocardial infarction, right? Which we all know is basically, you know, uh, a necrosis of the heart in which the myocardial tissue is deprived of oxygen, right? And when we look at the risk factors, we're looking at CAD or coronary artery, artery disease. We're looking at atherosclerosis, hypertension, smoking, and obesity, right? Now, the main diagnostic we're looking at is electrocardiogram. And when we look at the EKG with a patient with MI, usually there would be an ST um, segment elevation, the T wave would be inverted, and the Q wave would be abnormal, right? And what would occur is there would be an enlarged Q wave in the patient, right? Now, looking at um, looking at the labs, we're looking at the total creatine kinase, uh, and there would be more of an increase in uh, the total creatine kinase um, in which basically the higher uh, the amount, the serum amount, it can indicate uh, myocardial damage, right? Or muscle damage in the heart. Also, the CK uh, MB isoenzymes, um, it's basically um, found um, in the myocardium and 
there would be an elevated CKMB levels uh, in the serum. And this is very specific uh, for a myocardial cell wall damage, right? Now, know the normal values for the CKMB, which is normally 3 to 5%, um, or 5 to 25 units uh, per liter, right? Now, we're also looking at the troponin levels, uh, which is basically considered specific for myocardial damage, and it would be an, an elevated uh, amount of troponin level uh, in a patient with MI, right? Now, obviously, when we do assess our patients, uh, you know, there's going to be chest pain. There's going to be a severe crushing stabbing. Um, chest pain that can last over 30 minutes, right? And, of course, there would be substernal pain that can radiate to the left arm or the hand, the neck, or the jaw. And basically, with a patient with MI, there is no relief uh, with rest or when the patient is given nitroglycerin, right? Now, mostly, um, in regards to treatments, uh, both invasive and non-invasive, obviously, we're going to have the patient... Uh, have have them in bed rest uh, also in regards with the procedures uh, which can involve the cabbage or what we call coronary artery bypass graft and basically it's a procedure to help you know improve the blood flow in the heart and basically diverts the blood around the clogged or narrowed major arteries right and allow more of a uh, um, more of a more of a blood flow into the deprived uh, myocardial tissue um, that is, you know, that is caused by the by the myocardial infarction. Now, obviously, oxygen therapy is very important, and another procedure that is very um, important uh, as a source of treatment is you, you know your coronary artery stent placement, right, or PCTA. Now. Basically, the procedure is done to open the blood flow vessel to allow blood to pass through more easily, right? Um, regard with the stent placement. Now, with drug therapy, I have what I call the five A's in regards with drug therapy for a patient with MI. And we're talking about our analgesics, our, our ACE inhibitors, our antiarrhythmics, our anticoagulants, antihypertensives, and of course, our adrenergic blockers, specifically beta adrenergic blockers, right? And of course, we're also going to be giving nitrates or nitroglycerin um, IV as necessary, right? Now, you know, with, with nitrates, it's basically, you know, a vasodilator that can help widen or dilate the blood vessel, which obviously can help improve the blood flow and the oxygen circulation, right? Now... In regards to their beta adrenergic blockers, uh, the three main common drugs are your propranolol, your nadolol, and metropolol. And basically, it helps reduce the blood flow, uh, blood flow pressure by blocking the effects of the hormone epinephrine, right? Also, we can give the patient <clears throat> some thrombolytic therapy, which can basically help dissolve the blood clots that block the major arteries uh, during an MI, right? And the main drugs would be streptokinase, right, and activase. Now, when we talk about our antiarrhythmic uh, meds, we're talking about our amuterone, lidocaine, and prosanamide. And basically acts by blocking the membranes, uh, sodium, potassium, and the calcium channels, which can basically help reduce abnormal contractility um, uh, in the heart rate and in, in, in the patient with MI, right? Now, lastly, we, uh, I spoke about ACE inhibitors. Uh, the two main ACE inhibitors are Captopril and uh, Enapril, which is Vasotec. And those two are very important, guys. Always remember those two always go together usually. And it basically inhibits the, you know, the ACE inhibitors basically inhibits the renin angiotensin aldosterone system by basically preventing the conversion of your angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, right? And... You know, I just want to briefly go over MI with you guys, and hopefully you got something from this review. I know it was 
kind of a, a very quick fast review but i just i just want to i just want to go back i know i've done this review review before but uh, i just want to review you know cardiac the cardiac system because i think it's a very very important topic uh, in your NCLEX exam so that's it guys i will see you in the next video good luck and god bless thank you